All right. Well, hello, Rick. Hey, brother. It's Monday. It's Monday. What a Monday. And I'm in Alabama. Alabama. Your project, what is it called? Uh, Next Step Storm. Next Step Storm, Alabama. Yes. There's six of us who are down here. And actually, I'm in Edgerton. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. It's, it is something. It is yeah. Something. Yeah. I'm. Uh, there are six of us who are who are going or who have gone, and um, we are we're we're down there to help those who have had storm damage or what have you. Um, this is a pretty cool group. We met, and um, we're going to do anything and everything. And I told them if if. Uh, Monty and Kim Brenneman are the ones who are down there who are kind of heading this up. If they say, hey, we're going to go over here and do this, and then something happens, and we got to go over there, we, we just got to go with the flow. And they're all for it. Whatever, wherever God leads, we're, we're going to make it happen. So while you're doing that, we're going to do Superstart in Edgerton. So Angola and Edgerton are going to come together and do Superstart for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. It's going to be a good time. Yes. And I believe, is this Sunday the kickoff of the new series? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Big so, stuff. Stay tuned. Yes, big, big stuff going to happen. And uh, yeah, over the next six weeks, this is a six-week series coming up. Um, buckle up, get ready to roll. And uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a blast. Kicking yeah. off, uh, kicking off uh, what, a late spring, early summer, I guess. So, yeah, well, let's get at it. We're at Romans. It sounds like those guys ended up Romans eight. Yes. We're going to be in Romans nine. Um, yes, sir. I actually grabbed my NIV Bible, the right. very weathered Bible that I've been using. So we're going to grab that today. Okay. So starting at nine. So chapter three, verse nine, again. I'm saying it 10 times, hoping you can turn there. If anybody on here has not turned to it yet. Romans chapter 3, verse 9. Here we go. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. I think we'll go there. I know there's a little okay. bit, man, I love, so I'm glad I came in on this. I, this is a good part. So we talked about the courtroom. He goes, Paul goes in there and starts pointing at people and then he gets on the religious or those who think that they're right with God. And he goes on a rant for a while about them. And then finally ends here saying, so what's the conclusion? What's the verdict? And it is, we're all dirty sinners. I, I say my kids are dirty sin bags. Like that's <laughs> full of sin. Um, that's the way we all are. Yeah. Yes. We're kind of born into that. So I want to focus in on uh, something that really caught my attention that never has before. And I just underlined it uh, just prior to coming on. Uh, verse nine um, at the very end of it says whether Jew or Gentile, that includes everybody, mm -hmm. are under the power of sin. Yep. So if we think sin has no power, we're fooling ourselves. Sin yep. has power. Uh, is it any wonder why we mess it up here and mess it up there? And again, uh, whether it be by, um, well, I, you know, I just got caught up in this situation or or it just happened, or we do something on purpose. There is power in sin, and we have to be alert at all times. Otherwise, yeah. it, it sucks us in so easy, and we, and we go, w -w 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 what, what happened? What happened? Yeah. Well, duh. I mean, sin doesn't mess around. Uh, it's there. Uh, Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy, and he'll do it. Uh, under the disguise of darkness, which is, that's where sin does its best work. And um, 
just grab a hold of us and and if we're not alert and not alight and not awake if we don't have our armor on we get pulled in very very easily and then we go what happened mm -hmm. oh yeah that's why the armor is so important why it says do it daily daily put on your armor because you got to put in those boundaries to protect yourself from sin that is always crouching always trying to get in i i joke with my students sometimes about like all right, so you you don't want to do that sin that you keep doing. So get out of the room. There's always a door. There's always a way out. You always need to. But the problem is we walk so close to the edge and think we're strong enough. And and actually, as a, I want to say, as a teenager, that's what I did. I, I thought I was strong enough. I would, I'm never going to smoke that. I'm never going to drink that. And then I went to the parties because yeah. that's where all my friends were. Yeah. And while I was there, guess what? Peer pressure was too much and it just crouched right in. Yep. So I remember those days and I, so this is, yeah, I love that. I want to underline that too now, the power yeah. of sin. Yeah. Yep. There is power in sin. We talk about the power of Holy Spirit, the power of God, the, but there's power in, I mean, Satan is no one to challenge head on. No. Um, uh, you've got to know when to stand and fight, and you have to know when to run. And, the only uh, reason Satan is a punk, why we can say stuff like that, is yeah. because of Jesus. We go, <laughs> from behind Jesus, we can point over Jesus' shoulder and go, yeah, you're a punk, but <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't go up and face him face to face, no. That's right, that's right, <laughs> yes. So going down through the rest of those verses that you read, I mean, no one is innocent. Um, um, no one is good and 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 when when it talks about um uh, no one is no one is good it it's it's not they're saying that we're not good it's it's um we're we're, we're well we're not good but we're valuable um but we've fallen into sin we've allowed that sin to grab a hold of us even though we are of such enormous immeasurable value to god we, we we mess it up we mess it up you got a baby on on yeah. your lap look she, at that she wants to say something apparently yes she's, Hi. she's yes i think she's getting a little fussy i'm gonna pass her off to mom all right so yeah like no one is righteous no one understands no one seeks god and and again this is where I think we could take a hard look at this and, and think of the verse that says, God opposes the proud, but uh, cares for the humble. And this is, this is just showing, like, if you're prideful, if you think, yeah, I'm, I'm better than those people here, let's just read through these again. And he's actually quoting from Psalms, uh, many spots in Psalms, like my Bible kind of throws a bunch of those in there. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and, uh, and again, I don't want someone to get confused and say, well, God doesn't think I'm good, so what's the use? Well, no. He knows you're not good, but you're valuable. You are beyond value to him. Just don't get caught up in the sinful nature and sinful world to where good becomes, you become evil. And uh, I mean, it takes you from place to place to place. And and you further and you fall deeper, deeper, deeper into sin. Yeah. And the further away you get away from God. So so we'll yeah. read we'll read through the, the last part of these quotes. The, I mean okay. he's, pulling, he's mainly pulling from Psalms. It looks like there's some from Isaiah, some from Ecclesiastes, but he's pulling quote after quote. And again, I love what you said, where um it doesn't mean we don't do good because our good is like dirty rags to God. No, it what it's saying is like our good needs to be out of our heart where we say because of what jesus did for us i'm going to do good if you're doing yeah. good because you're trying to score points that's where god's saying you can't score points with me don't even try do yes. it because you love me not because you're trying to win yeah yeah make it a lifestyle so yeah. here we go 13 okay their throats are open graves their tongues practice deceit the poison of vipers is on their lips their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, and I'm just, 
I, I underlined a few things as you uh, uh, prior to coming on and uh, mine says uh, their talk is foul. I can remember that. I can remember that. Um, uh, their speech is filled with lies. Yep. Yep. I, I've been there, done that. Still catch uh, cursing, <laughs> yeah. Cursing and bitterness. Uh, same thing. Yep. Uh, so then they, so then we come to, they are quick to murder. Mm -hmm. um, have I murdered anyone physically? No. Have I in my mind or wanted to? Yes. So I throw this out there. I, I, I'm a guy who says, don't ever say you're not able to do a sin. Okay. So I'm going to protect myself. So I never cheat on my wife. I'm going to act like I'm an idiot and I'm just going to fall into it. So I avoid it at all costs because I'm, I'm afraid of that because I've seen good people do it. With uh -huh. murder, I think it'd be the same way. If it wasn't for police, if it wasn't for the system that would come against you, if it wasn't for witnesses and finding the body and all that stuff, how many of us would actually murder if the if it became very easy? All of a sudden, yeah. right there, they're in front of you, and they said one more thing that just makes you snap. How easy would it be if you knew you wouldn't get caught? And I, I am going to say I think most of us would if it was, wasn't for Jesus and the Holy Spirit convicting us, if it wasn't for the fact that we'd get caught, I think we would very quickly. Yeah. I, I just want to take this opportunity right here, since you brought that up, um, to honor the authority that is over us, our police, our firemen, people who protect us every day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I, I, I'm just all the stuff that is going on in this world, the resistance, the trashing authority, especially our police officers. Uh, I, I stand up with them and I want to honor them. And there's no one in my family that I know of that's a police officer, but I have friends who police who is police officers, Dan Griffin who is uh, our, our chief of police here in Edgerton. I love the man. He's, uh, he's a great example. He's, uh, he's, he's just a, a very, very good police officer and a very, very good human being. Yeah. So, Matt Gardner? Yes, Matt. Oh, wow. Uh, just he's in Hawaii, so I don't like him so much right now. But Right. <laughs> but even thinking of his whole family, like... Yes, uh, he is. He is doing a, a swell job leading his family and raising all those kids. Yes. So I would not like, yeah, it, just to think that people would hate police just because they're police. Like, no, like God, God says that he is the one who puts people in charge. He is the one who sets the boundaries and we need to respect. I think the New Testament talks about how we need to respect them because they need to find that there's nothing wrong with us. We're not stepping on any toes other than we preach Jesus. That's the only thing they should find wrong with us. So yes, um, we should. We should definitely. And that's where we guard our hearts, we guard our minds by looking at the truth, which is what we're doing with 714s. We're putting the truth in our brains. So we know that uh, we have to protect ourselves from that, from that stinking thinking. Yeah. So one more thing on that. I mean, I look at a police officer, just as you said, how easy would it be if we didn't have them to when you got mad at somebody, uh, if they made it easy to murder, how easy would that be? Would you do it? Wouldn't you do it? I, I, I don't know. But um, our, our authorities, whoever they are in whatever branch they are, are just like guardrails. They're just like guardrails. They keep you in line. They keep you on the straight and the narrow. Uh, and if you get off, there's consequences. So keep doing that. Keep doing the straight the right, the awesome thing, and, and honoring God and honoring our authorities who are over us. Yep. And, and I guess to finish, yes, that was good. That was a good rabbit trail to go down. I'm glad we said that. Um, but I guess my main point, so I don't confuse the topic, I hope, okay. uh, is that Jesus said, if you hate someone, um, if you in your head want to beat the snot out of them, and you just imagined it, he's saying it's the same as doing it. Yep. And that's where I wanted to get to is saying, guard your mind against those. When those thoughts come in, get them out. Uh, when you uh, guys, it's a lot of times we say, bounce your eyes. If you look at something you shouldn't be looking at, bounce your eyes, get it away. Yep. 
Amen. Your thoughts too. You get angry, you need to get yourself out of the situation and get yourself on the truth that God's God takes vengeance. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, God put people in place who are in charge. Don't be angry at our leaders. God put them there or God let them get there for some reason. So we need to trust in the, the ultimate plan that God's in charge. Amen. So, yeah. But it, Amen. with that all said, we're still dirty sin bags. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as we, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, can we read more or no? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can. But I, just verse 18 it says they have no fear of God to restrain them. And I, I'm saying um, it's not bad to fear God, uh, a respectful fear, not to be afraid of him, but to have a respect, uh, a godly fear of, of our God, to respect him, to honor him, to know that it's the right thing to do to respect and honor him. Yeah. So, yes. Amen. Yep. All right, let's do 19. 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silent and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of our sins. I love that verse. I, I, I remember trying to memorize that a while ago, but that's such mm. that's such a good a good verse right there as a reminder that uh, the law, meaning the Old Testament, the the first five books of the Old Testament, a, a lot of that stuff is there to point point us to God, to point to make us realize how off we are. We we need Jesus. If you didn't know, if you have not read the Old Testament, the Old Testament is what tells you why we need Jesus. That's why it's there. And it, and it points us to Jesus. And then the New Testament's all about Jesus. Yes. Well, uh, that the verse 20 and the last part of that, for the more we know God's law, the clearer, clearer it becomes that we aren't obeying it. I mean, when you know that law intimately, you know every time you're breaking it through a thought, through something that you say, through a deed that you're doing somehow, some way. So a question that it has in my uh, study Bible, the last time someone accused you of wrongdoing, what was your reaction? I think that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, it, and it goes on. Was it denial? Did you argue? Were you defensive? Um, all of those things. Or were you totally innocent? I mean, they, they accused you of wrongdoing for some reason. Um, uh, and again, I'm going to come back to police officers. Uh, I haven't been picked up for speeding too many times, I think a few times. But each time I knew exactly what I was doing. And there was this one time, I can't remember what town it was in, but I was going uh, 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. It was in a 35 and just 50, probably 50, maybe 100 feet ahead of me was a 45 mile an hour speed limit sign. And, and he told me I was going 10 miles an hour over, the speed limit was 35, but I hadn't reached that sign yet. And, and I did argue with him a little bit. I said, I mean, it, it, look, it's just, he said, but you were going 45 back here, dude. And uh, so I had to pay the piper. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know when, you know, I don't know when I've been accused of something that I've been doing wrong, but each time it feels like I know, I, I already know you don't even need to tell me, I know I was doing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and with that being said, oh, one second. All right. Oh, can you wait? Can I help you when I'm done here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's very sad. Well, we're, we're we we can close her up right here. This is a good place to stop. So you, you want me to read? You're saying no more reading. That's what yeah. Saying. Let's let's whoa well, right there. Do you have any more comments on those I verses? I had one last uh, thought that came to my mind was uh, now I can't remember her name. Ma, was it Mother Teresa or anyways that <laughs> the one of those ladies that was a saint and did all kinds of good um, was like quoted as saying. 
maybe you have to look up the quote, but it says, uh, you'll never understand that Jesus is all you need till Jesus is all you have. And uh, that's a big part of the Old Testament. Uh, wow. I think every time I read it, when I read through the, the stories of uh, the judges and the kings and how failure after failure, every time Israel tried to do something right, they even screwed that up. And I think it was just, it's just a great picture of why we need you this so much. And so you have to realize you really have to either hit rock bottom and have nothing, or you have to realize how wretched you are before yeah. you finally realize how much you really need Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. For real. And, and we real. need, we need Jesus mm -hmm. for sure. So that was the end of that part of the conviction. Yes. The next yeah. part is when he finally explains, okay, now that you know you're a wretch, now what's next? What's the answer? And then, yeah. Yes. Well, let me, uh, let me just get a little uh, a bait right there, a little thing, and a cliff, cliffhanger. And mine says, forgiveness of sin through Christ. Christ took our punishment. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's going to be a good part to discuss. So, yeah. so don't miss. Don't miss uh, come Tuesday. But, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, let's pray, brother. Sounds good. You want to kick it off or you want a second? You know what? I'll kick it off. All right, make it happen. All right. Oh, Father, uh, I am eternally thankful that I can call you Father, that you have uh, adopted so many as your sons and daughters. Yes, Lord. And we don't deserve it. Lord, thank you for Jesus and your plan that... Uh, again, is so much better than what we could have came up with. And thank you for loving us, even though we are just so sinful and so evil many days. Uh, Lord, we are pushing forward and trying to help your kingdom move and go uh, bring as many people into the kingdom as possible. And we're doing that all because of what you've done for us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for changing our hearts for giving us a new mind a refreshed heart and uh, lord you've changed so many things in my own life and now i want that for others and lord help us to remember that that day when we became christian the the days when you answered our prayers big and you really showed yourself off to us lord help us to remember those every day as we look at others who are living without hope without joy and Lord, help us to also share this message of sin in a loving way, helping people realize how sinful they are, but let us do it in a loving way, not throwing it at them, not trying to guilt them, but just helping them to come to your loving arms. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Lord God, um, um, thank you that we get to live in a country that uh, speaks freedom and uh, Lord God we we don't take our freedom for granted and we just thank you for America and this place that we get to live Lord I pray for all the authorities over us uh, great and small and uh, that we would follow the laws of the land uh, the laws that have been set before us Father that we re would respect those laws and uh, Lord God, as, as scripture has said, not one of us is good, but we are so, so valuable. Mm -hmm. So Father God, I just thank you for placing value in us. Uh, and that value couldn't have been more spoken than giving your son Jesus for each one of us. So I thank you for him and his life. Uh, and I thank you for the resurrection that took place that ho where Holy Spirit just drew him out of the grave. And uh, he did what he said he would do. And so, Father, we just thank you for uh, who we are in Christ. And uh, we give this day to you. We honor and bless the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we, we praise you and thank you uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty. Yes, sir. Another one in the books. So... We will see yeah. everybody tomorrow. Happy Monday.